How's it, you sexy mother lovers? Your boy Benny needs a new computer stand. That computer stand there with the microprocessor has died, so um, it needs to go, and I need a new one that holds all these keyboards. So a drawer would be nice. I'm still not sure, though, yet, as at that point. The height I want to make taller. I do definitely want an organic-looking computer stand, so probably some sculpts is going to be involved. It's definitely not going to be boring and square. So grab a cold one, sit back, and enjoy. These feet, before anyone gets their itchy fingers diving for the comment section, they're just bling. They look the box, and like anything on legs and feet, visually looks like there's more space. Which is a bruisy bonus on the desk, if you ask me. This new addition to my editing desk has taken over 12 months to come to fruition. I couldn't decide on any design. I got to the point I was like, just do it. What's the worst that can happen? I saw this and I was like, it's meant to be. This was left over from my desk build. So it's going to match. It's going to match very well. Hey up everybody, I hope you're all well. Just a quick heads up, don't forget to head over to my Patreon page to support this channel. Think of it like buying me a beer once a month. It's pressure free, no obligation, cancel any time. You get to watch my videos ad free, no holes barred, the director's cut and a WhatsApp group. On that note, I'd like to say a special thank you to my new patrons, Andrew Mills, Stephen Bettany, Johannes Soberg, Paul Hodgson, Peter Larson, Ash Bates and Craigley. Thank you. Resin, I'm not a big fan. I'd really like someone to invent something similar that goes off in 30 minutes and looks the same. There's too much bloody fuss filling voids and knots. There's nothing that looks as good on the market, in my opinion. It drives me bonkers having to fill a void twice every time, no matter how much you baby it. And that usually adds up to 40 hours plus before you get to carry on. This will look like a dog's dinner if you use a jigsaw. Even if you use a down cut blade, it will look like a ripped out fireplace and you won't see your line, which you'll need in a minute. Perfect. 
I had cracked on at this point, not giving a moment's thought to what I was actually doing. I was just in the moment trying to get that nice, perfectly smooth edges. And then found the noopsie. EU AK polyurethane glue, albeit expensive, is a lifesaver, especially five minute PU. Just don't listen to what people say on Facebook groups, just learn your glue and you'll have a better time of it. For those occasions you want to be over in seconds, PU it. Gloves are a must though. I will get away with this, it won't stick to the bench, not permanently, because that bench has been finished with a wax or not a lot, nothing sticks to it really, not fully. This is a lot easier if you have worked up this le level X and Y. But if you don't, you just need to make sure your levels are the same as the base you're working from. Not sure if you're going to know what I mean. Say the bubble touches one side of the line or is just past it. Your next piece that's going to be above it, the pattern, that bubble needs to be in the same position in the spirit level to, ma you know, to make sure the template matches the angle. Hope that makes sense. An MFT top is a must have in any shop. I can clamp stuff in so many ways. You won't use it much, but when you need it, you're well grateful to it. This is an old trick I saw on film sets. Leveling out stages, well handy to have. Wedges in a drawer somewhere of all sizes. You get the idea, right? As you move the two together or away from each other, you raise and lower the piece. That's why I dropped in that bit of chipboard, because I knew those wedges wouldn't work to that height. This didn't go well. It was a bit of a hit and hope, to be honest. I did manage to pull it out with all the clamping and screwing though, so it wasn't an issue in the end. Father, the sleeper has awakened! I bet when you're in a workshop you have stuff go through your mind when you're working. That was exactly what went through my mind when I discovered that eureka moment. Without cheating, what film was it from though? 
Was this worth it? Probably not. Not with a route that big, but it was fun though. Sign up to my Patreon guys, I really need a better B-cam and a workshop. Look at it, looks like Nanobot's eating. I hate the footage I get from my phone, it's crap. You're wondering why so many passes. Simple. Less strain on the saw. No burning. Burn marks on end grain take a lifetime to remove. It's something you don't want to do when you have cut to length. Quick tip on why I have loads of chisels. Use the crap chisels to hog the crap out. Use a decent honed chisel paired to the finish line. My original monitor stand raised the computer screen up only probably 60 mil. I looked about and most of the advice on the internet says the screen, top of the screen, should be sort of kind of at your eye level when it's on the desk, which if you've got a big iMac, that's impossible, not unless your desk is pretty much on the floor. My TV in my living room, the middle of that TV screen is at my eye level, so why shouldn't a computer monitor be the same? It's brass monkeys in the shop. The best the saw can do is three inches. Not gonna achieve what I have in mind. So I went to a man that can. He's also called Ben. He recycles trees, pretty good fella. If a man says you can use his tools, he trusts you and that's <laughs> cool. it's cool, just cool, then into the mouth. Oh, nice. If I told you you found this at a scrap part, would you believe me? The scrap prices? If you're in the Suffolk area, check him out for wood supplies. I'll leave a link to his Facebook page below. Another real world looking workshop, not these hospital clean workshops you see on YouTube. 
If that was my saw, I'd have to do something about that fence. It's too short, in my opinion. I'd rather have the board fully supported, start of cut to the very end of the cut. When I'm coming out of that cut, there's a slight wiggle, which, of course, is going to open up your cut. And here's where I actually get to dial in the height and remove some waste, which was kind of nice because um, there was a lot of tension released, cut the trenches in the boards. So that enables me to level all out and get it nice and square and similar thicknesses. So it's a good job I had a lot of excess. Now there's really not much I can show you or tell you about this process other than I like to be left alone. It's just way more enjoyable that way. There's nothing I can say that makes this easy for you. You can plan your shape short and, and design. I prefer just to get lost in the moment and it always works out for me. The discs, they, they will show you when you're cutting badly with the burns and the likes. The creative, creativity though is up to you. Just don't be afraid of it. If you're good at solving problems, this will be easy for you. Because you make a mistake, you'll make it so no one knows you've made a mistake, make it part of the design. Quite often though, making a mistake actually makes the design. It's quite perverted that way.
is it? It's the plumber. Plumber? I didn't call a plumber. Full neuro on my word. If you have to look that up, do delete your history and don't let your missus see it. So heavy on the lube and let that soak in and then remove the excess. I find I can sometimes get away with one coat doing it that way. Or two thin coats works just as well. I find I get no train lines, no tram lines like in the finish. If you like the cuts of my jib, don't forget to head over to my Patreon page to support this channel. Cheers. Be lucky. Be lucky.